I'd like to welcome you to our 1860s farmhouse entryway on this extremely rainy and cloudy day. I had intentions of shooting this video and then it just is nasty and cloudy. So I'm gonna insert a couple of photos here of our farmhouse. You can see the exterior whenever it is bright and green. Again, I can't believe that I'm shooting this video on such a cloudy day, but it'll give you the feel for the coziness of lamps in the winter. So we're just gonna take a little bit of a spin on this. I do feel that the, the home is a lot prettier when there's a lot more natural light, but we're gonna go with it and just share that cozy side. Now I could just go around our farmhouse and do scans of the rooms with the camera, but what better way to show you the home than taking you around while I do some homemaking. I'm also, am gonna scoot back and show you some shots of the whole thing too. But first I wanna show you this piece that we just picked up. We've had a little linen closet here for forever, but the one that we had that I found for 30 bucks on Facebook Marketplace many years ago, finally bit the dust. We've glued it, we've stapled it, and it was just done. I'm inserting here a few little clips of it so you can see how pretty it was. It just wasn't the quality that I wanted. So I found a different piece here on Facebook Marketplace. Luke went and picked this up for me for $275 and I now have all of my blankets organized and I even put my tablecloths and table runners in the bottom drawer. And I still have a whole side, I don't even know exactly what I'm gonna do with yet, but it is much bigger, it gives us a lot more space. With a house with no closets, which ours is, it's a Victorian farmhouse, There are there's one closet, it's underneath the steps. It just needs a lot of storage. And so we have so many pieces like this and I am willing to invest in pieces that are solid and that close. Oh my word, so many of these old pieces, they look beautiful, they're solid, they don't close. One thing that I want to change here in the kitchen is I have been seeing people adding lamps to their kitchens and wow, what a cozy vibe for the winter. My daughter who's 12, she is very much a decor loving girl, just like her mom. She walked in when she saw the lamp and she just squealed with delight. She totally understood why I wanted a lamp in the kitchen. I don't think I'm gonna leave this one in here because it has fabric on it, but I wanted to get the feel for the idea so that I can find the right lamp for in the kitchen, at least for the winter time. Some of you might be wondering where the espresso machine is. Well, it broke and we're gonna repair it, but we haven't yet. And so it's in the pantry. It might stay there because there's an outlet in there. Now, another thing I wanted to think about in here was adding some color to the curtains. So I picked up some tea towels and just clipped those onto the curtain rings. My same daughter, the one who totally gets it, <laughs> walked in the kitchen after nap time when I was doing this and said, okay, that just looks way too modern farmhouse. And she was right, and I already thought it. So I have since taken them down, but I just wanna get the feel for some color in here instead of the linen, and I do want to do it, but I don't like the striped pattern. It was funny though, because whenever I took them down and put the linen back, Luke said, oh, it felt so much cozier yesterday. So he felt that the color added some cozy. My daughter and I felt that it just made it look modern farmhouse. So we are going to figure out how to get that feel with the fabrics we like. I'm removing the rest of the Christmas decor today. I have just been removing it little by little, but I'm ready to finally be done with all of it. And so I'm just piling it up over on the countertop so I can take it all down and put it in the basement until next year. I wanna take a quick break from this home tour and homemaking video to tell you about today's video sponsor, Birch Living. If you've been following along a while, you know that I love Birch Living because they have quality, organic mattresses. Sleep is really important. We spend a third of our lives asleep and I prefer to avoid the off-gassing that happens in the manufacturing process of mattresses. When looking at all the options, I settle on Birch because they are comfortable, made right here in America, and are crafted with organic and natural materials. Now we have three Birch mattresses in our house. We have two in the boys' rooms. They are the standard Birch mattresses in the twin size, and then we have the queen size that is the Birch Lux and the topper, which makes it just so incredibly comfortable. Unlike synthetic mattresses, the wool in these mattresses make it hypoallergenic, 
It is both allergen and mildew resistant. I've been a Happy Birch customer for over a year now, maybe a couple years now. The mattresses are comfortable. It comes packaged so that it is not hard to assemble. And I love having a 100% non-toxic mattress that I can feel good about sleeping on. Birch Living offers a 100 night sleep trial and a 25 year warranty. So if it makes you nervous to buy something online, something like a mattress that you're going to have for so many years without trying it first, you can rest assured that you have 100 nights to make sure that it is exactly what you want and then you have a 25 year warranty. You're making a purchase that you can feel good about for many years to come. Birch Living is offering Farmhouse Han Boon viewers $400 off your first mattress and two free pillows by using my link birchliving.com forward slash farmhouse. It'll also be linked in the description box below. I'm going to show you soon how this all connects, but in the entryway, I am making up a little spray of vinegar and water to rid this glass of all of the fingerprints. Cleaning the glass is not something that I do a ton in our home, but it does look so nice whenever you can see through these French doors into the kitchen. One thing I love about our house is it's not open concept, but it has a lot of ways in which you can make it more open, like shutting these doors if you want to, trap in the baby in the morning or the sound if the rest of the kids are sleeping, shutting the pocket doors over into the living room area. You can either open them or shut them so that you have a lot of flexibility there. I have a few more pieces of Christmas decor over on this mirror. Now, this mirror I picked up for me and Luke's room from an antique shop but then we ended up putting a crib in there for Theo to sleep in our room once he graduated from sleeping in bed with us. So I moved it into this area next to the bathroom. And it's of course the perfect place because you can come out of the bathroom with your outfit and your hair done and see you know, how everything is looking. I'm also just adding some touches in this bathroom. You know, when you refill the hand soap and add a candle, all just feels right in the world. I'm removing the Christmas greenery from the entryway area and adding fresh plants. I'm bringing those back out. I kind of had them stashed away, but I want more around my house to give it that green. Whenever I remove the evergreen, things just feel a little bit plain. And then I'm gonna bring you over to the living room area. I feel like by looking into the mirror at the bathroom and through the entryway in the kitchen, you can see where the living room and the stairs lay out. This living room used to be the dining room. I believe that's what it was for the original house, but we need bedrooms in our house more than we need a formal dining room. And so we have made the dining room, the living room. I love how it has this big picture window. Because we homeschool, this is also the place where we keep all of our school books. A lot of life happens in this room from reading to playing. We have Legos or Duplo Legos is what the toddlers like to play. I'm pretty big decline clutterer of toys, but there is one toy we've had for years and that's this little zany zoo. I'm gonna put that down in the basement because Theo is done playing with it, but we've kept it through all of the kids at a certain age. I think it's around like nine months to one. They all love playing with it. So I am gonna keep it, but for the most part, you can see I'm pretty minimal with toys because I don't like to spend all day tidying them back up. It feels like a burden for everyone in the family. And the biggest toy going right now is the Duplo Legos. And then we also of course have a few cars here and there, but we do keep the toy situation very minimal. I love that since we live on a little farm with our farmhouse, I can look out my picture window and see our little Guernsey heifer there. Okay, I'm going to try to do a few shots here so that you can see the rooms that I've shown you so far and how they lay out together. If you haven't caught up on the before tour, you can search Farmhouse on Boone, our new farmhouse, and you can see exactly like this exact walkthrough before we did anything. So we gutted the kitchen, did a new window in there so that it was a nice large window that I could look out to the barn, get lots of natural light. We added the cabinets that are the office there to the right that you're looking at now, the big brown uh, wooden cabinets. We added the wood stove, the little hearth pad that it's on, the brick on the chimney, the stove, the oven, the light fixtures, the pantry. We completely redid that. New cabinetry, new flooring, paint. We have really made this place function for how we wanted it to feel and look. I really like comfortable, cozy farmhouse. And the more that I collect, the more 
I am getting that vibe. I really like to have a lot of antique pieces and art. I don't want it to feel cluttered. I don't want a lot of stuff to have to put back, but things on the walls, textures, even some color I'm trying to add a lot of, it really is coming together. Now this guest bathroom here is also a laundry room, which is fine. It's really nice having main floor laundry. Again, I have a video for almost every single before and after. So if you search Farmhouse on Boone Farmhouse Bathroom, or Farmhouse on Boone kitchen renovation or hearth pad, it's all there. Now this is our bedroom and I've shared how I made the canopy crib for Theo. I need to take down a little bit more of the Christmas decor in here. I think it's pretty much the last of it and spruce up the bed so I can show you what this room looks like. Now it's taken a lot of different uh, forms over the years. It was a living room. We added the faux fireplace whenever it was a living room. I do have a tutorial for that here on the channel. So it is just a few collected things together. So I found a mantle. We made a hearth pad, a real hearth pad on the floor to make it more believable. And then I found the insert at an antique shop as well that we refinished. So that way it looks very convincing. It feels cozy. It's a nice focal point that we can enjoy. It was a living room at the time, but it also works well in our bedroom. We use this trunk at the end of our bed for queen size linen. So I do have a lot of the twin size linens in one of the drawers of our new armoire. And then this little piece here, this chair, I'll talk about even though I'm moving on to the steps, is the, the chair that I painted. I'm planning to shoot an update on the couch and painted chair because that was a very controversial project I did about three years ago now. You can search it, but I can't wait to share with you how it's holding up. Spoiler alert, I'm really loving it. I'm also swapping out some photos here in this gallery wall. I'm trying to keep them updated and we had some new photos done and so I changed out a few. I wanted to show you this light that I found at an antique shop and hung with the wallpaper. And now we're moving to the boys room. I wanna show you some changes that we're making in here. So I've already shared with you a mood board and design plans for what we're doing in this boys room. And I have a whole lot to share about that because we actually made a major renovation mistake on the wall that you can't see in this shot where we attempted the built-ins. So more on that later, I definitely plan to share that full story. I'm not 100% sure how much of the photos I'll share because it was a complete disaster. So we're picking up the pieces of that, but I am still going to make this room feel new and fresh by cleaning it up and adding a few of those design elements anyways. One thing I really wanted to change in here was the rug. Now this is Luke and me attempting to not move the beds out because we'd have to take them apart and put in this new rug. My big goal with this rug was to make the beds sit all the way on it so that the kids can't move them around. I wanted a rug that felt very stationary, whereas jute, though beautiful, if you move anything, it, it just slides a lot and it can get holes in it. It's just not very substantial for a room like this. So I am adding the rug and some quilts and this room feels fresh and new even though we aren't doing the full renovation that we thought. So more on that later. One thing that I want to point out is yes, in this house today, I did bring in a few new things, but there have been plenty of days where I go around my house and I just give attention to things. I refill the soap. I add a fresh bouquet of flowers. I wash stuff that you don't wash very often. I clean up and organize toys. I declutter and have a big pile of stuff for donation. And everything feels so fresh and new. So just want to encourage you to spend days like this giving attention to your home. You don't have to buy new stuff. As you can see, I did get a few new quilts and a new rug because I really had some desires for simplifying these rooms with all the boys we have in our house. A lot of times it's hard to figure out who uses what because quilts end up downstairs. I don't know. If you're a mom of a lot of kids, you might know what I'm talking about. 
but encouraging you, whether you are just moving things around the house, I find that taking a quilt from one spot that I'm used to seeing one place or a chair or a dresser and using that as a side table, moving things around can make everything feel fresh and new, whether you buy anything or not. I'm also doing some tidying in here. Am I the only one whose kids is obsessed with tape? So I'm pulling tape off of books. I'm always stuffing my aprons and my pockets full of trash that I find around here, putting books back where they go. I found this little couch at a thrift shop. And so currently the this boy's room has two couches. I do want to move things around. We haven't gotten to that just yet, but it does add some coziness to have couches in these spaces, especially because the rooms in this house, we don't have that many rooms but they are really big, so we can do a lot of furniture. The bathroom in the boys' room is simple. We did an entire renovation on it. I mean, we didn't completely gut it, but we added new flooring, paint, antique vessel sinks, a vanity, and then a rug. I, as you can maybe tell from around the house, like to collect vintage rugs. They add a lot of texture and coziness all throughout. Since we picked up a new rug for the boys' room, I am doing some moving rugs around. I've loved this little antique rug here in this room, but I feel that the other Turkish rug I have here that was layered on top of the jute rug in the boys' room would fill out the space a little bit better. We weren't able to refinish the hardwood floors on this part of the house because they were in such poor condition, so I just painted them. They do get chipped up, and so having a larger rug in this space will definitely help in between times whenever I redo them. I do repaint them occasionally, but as you can imagine, it's sort of a deal because people can't get to their rooms, and so it's just not gonna happen very much. So being able to cover it up with a larger rug, especially since we already had it is quite a good idea. And then the jute rug, I am just going to list for free on Facebook Marketplace. This room is technically not a room. It was definitely not listed as a bedroom on the listing, but we can use it as one. And that's what we're doing with a lot of rooms in this house that aren't technically not supposed to be rooms. They are sitting rooms. They work out just fine for us to use as bedrooms. Now, one more space I need to show you, well, other than my daughter's rooms, because they are teenagers now, and so they have, you know, it's their, their style, their thing, it's probably a mess, is this little mud room area. This is essential to a farm and a farmhouse, and it's never clean, and I did not want to fully clean it up. I'm sorry, there was so much going on today. You've seen it on here before, clean, but we have a rainy day, and so there are muddy and wet boots, wet coats hanging, but this space is functional and useful, and it gets used every single day. We are loving the coziness in the kitchen and the feeling of winter, not Christmas decor, but just that winter January feeling. It's great. I can't wait, though, to change it to spring and summer. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you are brand new, please hit that subscribe. I make new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.